Hello, my name is uh, Dave Fedors. I'm a NASA research test pilot at uh, NASA's facility at, uh, in Palmdale and Edwards Air Force Base, California. One of the airplanes I fly is the DC-8. It's used for Earth science, and I wanted to talk about the airplane and some of its missions with you. It's a first-generation jet transport. There's very few of them still flying. NASA's airplane was built in 1967, and NASA got it in 1986. First thing they did was re-engine it with modern 737 engines, and then uh, we've been operating it ever since. It's been a great, great platform. The airplane has a number of advantages. Uh, one, it's got an extremely long range. You can fly across the Pacific Ocean without too much trouble. It has a, a lot of payload space, so it can fit a lot of uh, instruments and uh, scientists on board. It has really large windows, which we use to put instruments in. So we take the window glass out and then put a, a plate with a probe so that uh, scientists can gather um, atmospheric samples while the aircraft's in flight. For an airplane its size, it can fly both fast and slow, which is somewhat unique. There's probably another, not another airplane I can think of that's quite as versatile as NASA's DC-8. Also, NASA's done a lot of modifications. They've put kind of standardized uh, holes in the top and bottoms that we can fit instruments in uh, that make it really easy to integrate uh, instrument packages. The airplane supports NASA's Earth Science mission. Earth Science is basically the study of the Earth that encompasses uh, several disciplines. Obviously, it's an airplane, so it flies in the atmosphere. So meteorology, which is study of weather, is one area that we've done studies on. The scientists will come up with a scientific problem or objective or an area they want to gather data for, and they'll design a campaign around, around that. Um, and then based on what the objectives of the campaign are, they'll select instruments, and then we, NASA Armstrong will integrate those instruments on board the aircraft. Then we fly the airplane locally, make sure the instruments check out and that they're compatible with the airframe. So I'd like to talk about three of the campaigns that I participated on in NASA's DC-8. The first is the CORUS AQ. CORUS stands for the Korean US, it's actually a trade agreement, and AQ stands for air quality. They have a lot of factories, and additionally, they have a fairly uh, bad air pollution problem. They get a lot of smog. And so the Koreans invited NASA and the DCA to come over, see if they could figure out where a lot of the air pollution was coming from and how it changed over time. We flew up and down the South Korean peninsula, was extremely challenging from a piloting perspective to fly low level over Korea in a bit large airplane with the language differences and the kind of congested airspace. But I think we got a really good set of data that the Koreans will use to try and reduce their air pollution problem. The next uh, campaign I'd like to talk about was one that was actually done in four parts. It's called the atmosph atmospheric tomography. Tomography means cross-section, so they're trying to get a cross-section of the atmosphere. And they wanted to do it in different seasons, so we actually flew this whole mission four times. So we take off out of Palmdale, fly up to Alaska, went as far north as the Arctic Ocean. So we're getting a cross-section of the atmosphere. We would climb the airplane up to its cruise altitude, which is about 35,000 feet, and stay up there for a couple minutes, and then de descend down to 500 feet over the ocean, stay down there for a couple minutes, and come back up. So we're doing these dips, we call them, up and down the whole way. There's probably not another airplane I can think of that could have done those, on, especially on some of the longer legs. From Alaska, we went down to uh, Hawaii, and then each stop we're spending a couple days basically to work on the instruments, um, do any, any work on the aircraft and rest ourselves. From Hawaii, we went to uh, Fiji. On that leg, we crossed the equator and there's a lot of interesting meteorological things that occur as you cross the equator. That's where the kind of southern and northern hemisphere weather patterns converge. From Fiji, we went to Christchurch, New Zealand. And then one of my, the most interesting legs was from Christchurch, New Zealand, all the way to Punta Arenas. That's an extremely remote part of the world. There's no place you can land if you have an emergency. So it took, took a lot of uh, planning. And again, we're doing dips the whole way. So we're climbing, descending. And uh, what was interesting to me is the scientists found lots of indications of atmospheric pollution, even in that remote part of the world. Um, from Punta Arenas, we worked our way up the uh, Atlantic Ocean. The first stop was uh, Ascension Island. From Ascension, we went to um, the Azores. From the Azores, we went to Thule, Greenland. And then from uh, Thule, Greenland, we flew back to Alaska. And then the final leg was Alaska home. Again, a very rewarding, uh, challenging uh, campaign. Last campaign I'd like to talk about is Ice Bridge. 
And there was a period of years where they didn't have satellite coverage of polar ice caps. And so to bridge the gap, they, they used aircraft. DC-8 was used in Antarctica. NASA's P-3 was used up in uh, Greenland and the Arctic. So for about, about a 10-year period, we deployed the DC-8 to Punta Arenas, Chile, and then flew over Western Antarctica, getting about as far south as the South Pole, looking at sea ice, looking at glacier ice, and looking at the ice pack. We flew on um, the same legs you know, every two years apart so could, the scientists could see the changes in the ice thickness year over year. These, these were very fun flights to fly. We get to fly low level over Antarctica. Typically we'd get up, take off in the morning, fly about, it takes about three hours to get the DC-8 down to Antarctica. And then when we're down there, we're flying low level, 1,000, 500 feet to 2,000 feet for seven or eight hours. And then uh, afterwards, to climb back up another two or three hours back to uh, Punta Arenas and land. So it, they were long days, but really rewarding. You get to see a lot of Antarctica. It's a starkly beautiful area. It's enormous. The whole time we were down there, we saw nothing but rocks and ice. It, it, it is really almost... Uh, hard, hard to believe unless unless you see it. So those are three campaigns that I was lucky enough to participate in um, using the NASA DC-8. Um, so thank you very much.